everyone. So when you are developing and getting ready to facilitate an amazing professional learning experience for your educators, I want you to feel like this is not an overwhelming burden. I want you to feel like you have some really good facilitator moves and that the creation of the slide deck itself, right, and the agenda and all these things are actually ready to go for you. So I've created a bunch of kind of like full uh, support agenda slides, all the things kind of like package into one with my four part series for your staff meeting agendas. But here I want to share with you a common slide deck that I can kind of pull from anytime I want to use a particular move or do a particular thing in the agenda. So I'm going to walk you through mine and then I'll share it with you as a freebie. So you'll want to grab that link below in the description. I here have basically how all of my facilitator moves in or all the really common ones, I guess. So first I want to walk you through the setup. So I like to do a land acknowledgement. I will typically do like the whole um, kind of United States. I typically facilitate in the U.S. and then the link. And then I will screenshot out um, and make sure I know the names of specific tribal nations and how to pronounce each of those in advance. I also like to acknowledge, and this is newer for me. I've done a separate video on this, but my intellectual ancestors and contemporaries. So I don't come up with this stuff in a, in a vacuum, right? Like I am learning constantly and in partnership and in community with all these folks. So I just want to like name that somehow. I'm working on how to do that and I'd love advice for other ideas. Um, I like to do some sort of opening, I don't know about icebreaker, but like community builder or just like engager um, early on. So this is one of my favorites. This is the values in action. This is an old screenshot from kind of their old imagery, but values in action or VIA strengths. Um, check out their website. They're awesome. And I just, I like being able to start with appreciation because when we can appreciate ourselves as adults, we can do that better and have more asset-based language with students. I also like listing out like here are the expectations for today. So it might be we will and then learning targets or we will create and then here are the things we'll create today. Just recognizing that it's very creation based. I like being able to say you're going to walk away with something. And I set it up lately. I've been setting it up as check boxes. So you can check kind of as you go through. Um, another thing I like to do is set the collective agreements, especially if we're talking about discussion based things and how we're going to engage in discussion, particularly around topics where there might be high emotions or there's some sort of potential for disagreement or conflict, right? And so just to be able to name those and then get consensus from the group. And so I'll lay out how that goes. And I also might share how folks can do this with their students if they haven't already. The next thing I want to do is throughout, I will support personalization. One of my favorite ways to do this is to have a choice board for various topics and like content areas, but also various kind of modalities. Some person might want to read a blog or, um, you know, prefer to listen to an audio notes or watch a video or write like all these different things. So I typically, this is an example of one of my choice boards. You'll see, right, the content differs, but also like what it is, like a template versus a blog post versus a poster versus like a list of ideas, right? These are all very different in both format and content. So I'll usually give that within the protocol of what I need or win time. And then I will list out on the board, like here are all the things that you can do at this time. So you can explore the choice board, yes, but you can also do all this stuff, including come talk to me, right? Like conference with me, ask me a question or kind of build out whatever you're using. I also like to give autonomy in breaks. I like to build in a lot of different breaks. A lot of times what we're doing is really hard work. So even if you're doing like a 60 minute thing, do you want to include like a 90 minute or sorry, 90 second stretch break, water break, um, just like chat with the neighbor break to have a little bit of a brain break. Um, and I like to provide like multiple options visually for people to know that whatever you need to do is fine. Supporting discussion and engagement, there's so many for this and I'll actually do a separate video all on discussion and engagement moves and like the slides I will typically use and particularly for student facing activities. So I, when I'm training teachers or working with teachers, I should say um, on this, I will say, here's the slide I might use and you can just steal this and use it, right? So I will, I will do more on this later, but I like the pauses after I'm talking a lot to say like, okay, let's hear from you. This is your time to add or even contradict or problematize like, what I'm sharing with you, why wouldn't it work with your class or what ad adaptations might you use or what am I missing that you do already? I also like to do reflection questions and these two slides are the same. One is pausing and just giving them time to think. So this is kind of like the, the light bulb of like you're thinking about this these questions. So after we do something, right, it's usually creation based. So what did you create? Challenges, questions, ahas, and then you give the invitation to share out after they've had like a concrete 30 seconds, 60 seconds, whatever to think or jot about it. And then you have kind of the icon, which changes to conversing or sharing out. In closing, a couple things I like to do. One, I like to do a self-assessment. Uh, pre, then, post is, is a good one um, that I like. So you would have students 
or participants, and you could do this with students as well, self-assess, where am I on this Marzano scale? And I, I adapt it so it's only one, two, three. Um, and then I would paste the learning target. So I would have multiple slides, learning target on each one. Where are you now? And then you can also do a retrospective. Where were you at the beginning of today to give you some additional data if you'd like? Or you can just do like, where are you in this moment? That also may help set you up for people to design their next action step. So based on that evaluation, like what do we need to work on or what feels strong? And I want to actually like live that out and implement it immediately. So you might have some guiding questions like this. These are some very typical ones I'll have. And then I like to strategy recap in this box here just to remind folks of all the things that we did, either me modeling throughout the session or that we explicitly taught and, and were things they were learning about content wise. At the very end, I like to invite people to share their feedback. I have a typical Google form that invites people to to just kind of share. Um, and I think I may have linked it. Yeah, I've linked it down here too. So if you actually want to just go in um, and open it this way, you absolutely can. I'm going to give you this view um, when I share it with you. So you can actually go in and look at any notes if I put any notes in here um, or any like, yeah, that's not a thing that goes in there. Yeah, so like here, five minutes for self-assessment slides. Um, this is an idea for how you could annotate where they were and where they are now kind of thing. Um, so all these notes will be in there for you. And that's what I've got for you today. Feel free to use this deck. Grab the link. It's in the description below. And when you use it, feel free to just kind of shout me out and, and say, you know, I'm, I'm borrowing this or she has a great podcast. It's called Time for Teachership or te check out her YouTube series. Absolutely cool. I'm cool with you spreading the wealth and using this to save you time. Have fun and let me know how it goes.